Oh no, it's 3D again! Oh, watch it! This is hitting you right in the face! Oh, huh? Oh, it's... It's in 2D? Huh. Well, great. Now I look like an idiot, and my room's a mess! Has something been missing in your life since 1981's Valentine's Day slasher film, My Bloody Valentine? Was it a love that was not filled with the 2001 film Valentine? Don't you worry, because the 2009 remake of My Bloody Valentine will make you fall in love with pickaxes to the face all over again. The film had a hook right from the gimmicky trailer, which got a jump start on the early 2010's Real D 3D craze, helped by the fact that it was shot in 3D, made great use of the technology, and came out before people were sick to death of the gimmick due to an onslaught of cheap conversion 3D movies. The film was directed by Patrick Lussier and written by Todd Farmer, who know how to do a 3D spectacle, as they later would also do Drive Angry 3D, and just in terms of entertainment, Todd Farmer wrote Jason X, so you know you're gonna get a great time here. If you saw the original, you're all caught up. A serial killer is attacking folks in a mining town over Valentine's Day. Only this one is in 3D. So while the characters on screen are getting their heads split, audiences are leaving with the black lung. And it knows how to get your attention from the first frame. Poof, that's a downer. Pass me the coupons. There's gotta be an ad in there for gummy Valentine Lunchables. Like in the first, there was a collapse in the mine on Valentine's Day, and this opening sequence does remind me of how great the 3D was when I saw it in the theater. The montage of newspaper headlines alone felt like they were flying right at you. The survivor of the mine was Harry Warden, and this will either be a slasher film or a faith-based survival film. Though when Harry killed them all with a pickaxe to save some air, I'm thinking slasher film. Now he's in a coma and free to breathe all the air he wants, provided he doesn't breathe too heavily in the flashbacks. Shit, am I allowed to touch the thermostat? Just because Harry is in a whole lot of trouble over murdering some coal miners doesn't mean he can't go for his nightly walk through the hospital. Part of his physical therapy is to stand in the dark and burst into a title screen if need be. I have full confidence this case will be solved. Tom Atkins is Sheriff Burke. He knows how to solve a good hospital mystery, whether he's a cop or whether he's a doctor. See, putting the heart in the box of chocolates gives them an idea of who it is. Harry Warden's in a coma. Guess he woke up. Probably should have handcuffed him or not given him lipstick to dirty up the mirrors. Quick, search the nearest partying teenagers to find out where the slasher killer is. And search all of the boxes at the stores to see if there's organs in them. Tom is played by Jensen Ackles, while Sarah is Jamie King. Partying in the mine might seem like a bad idea now, but you have to remember, Soldier Boy is from a different time. Tom seems a little dour, but he should cheer up. He's in the far better remake, while Jared Padalecki was in the Friday the 13th remake. Sarah's a little upset, though. I was in Silent Night. Why is no one bringing that up? It was okay. A lot of characters still have the same names as the characters from the first, right down to Mind Collapse survivor Harry Warden being this almost urban legend-like monster that they scare each other with. Hey, Michael, check this out. <laughs> All right, you guys, stop messing around. You know, we're just trying to have some drinks and a good time here. Why do y'all gotta ruin it by getting murdered? Harry is defeated by his one weakness, lack of peripheral vision in the mask. Just stay to his sides and he won't see you. Although he can still hear. Jason, is that you? Ah, throwing out references to other franchises now. Clearly a reference to the Bloody Murder movies. More slasher killers should have used mines more. 
because it's much easier for the partying teens to do stupid things. This movie is going by at a quick pace. We've got an entire movie's worth of body count in the first 15 minutes. If the rest of you all die, leaving one final girl, we can wrap this up and go home in the first act. We're even getting our 3D's worth. <laughs> Audiences in the front row will get a free handful of glass thrown in their face. Now the killer will rub it in Tom's face that his loser friends left him behind because they hate him. And I told you who would save the day. Stay down, Harry! You're supposed to say it's Miller time. After pumping him with several more bullets, they'll get Harry right to the morgue where they'll definitely handcuff him. Now it's nine years later, where it's all the news still talks about. But after a decade, have the residents of Harmony been able to recover from the trauma? You named your town Harmony. Something bad was gonna happen. I don't know if it was a good idea to put Axel in charge as sheriff. Axel was the name of the killer in the first. This town is full of people who could be the killer. That's Kevin Teig. He's usually a bad guy. But don't make the same mistake Nolte did when thinking he's the Iceman. So much drama has happened over the past nine years. Yeah, the whole mass murder thing. But now Sarah is with Axel. Also, he's gonna bang her in a delicious bowl of diner ground beef. Never has an affair been so romantic. Can we meet in a motel next time? Excuse me, do you not like it when the termites watch? And they're already on the gift exchange level. I didn't get you anything. You don't need to. Um, I'm not falling for that again. Yes, I do need to. Now Tom is gonna show up and bring the supernatural references himself. Seriously, I think that's the same coat he wears on that. Just like this is definitely the bridge from the Mothman prophecies. There's drama here like gothic melodrama. Tom is back because his father died, so Tom wants to sell the mine, which he's the largest shareholder in. And that angers the mine manager, Ben. That mine is Harmony's lifeblood, Tom. They should know that, considering they're still cleaning the blood off the hospital walls. On the plus side, he gets his dad's ashes, and only half of it is made up of powdered chocolate mix. Things haven't changed in this town. It is still a great slasher movie setting. You can hear two people banging in the next room, and not just anybody, but Todd Farmer himself! I wish I could show you the part where naked Irene chases after him with a gun, so let's just assume Frank here gets in his truck and leaves. <laughs> Or still gets a pickaxe to the head. As for the naked girl, she fell asleep under the bed. The hotel manager, on the other hand, <laughs> is finally fixing the leak in the damn ceiling. Also, naked Irene dies. But if you're looking to warm your heart this Valentine's Day with pure heat and not a sharp object sticking through your rib cage, this episode is brought to you by Jeff's Famous Beef Jerky, where there's plenty of Valentine's Day savings going on. Plus, use the code 10OFF to get 10% off your order and see if you can brave the Carolina Reaper, Habanero Heat, or Sriracha Ghost Pepper flavors all over at jeffsfamousjerky.com. Hope to see you there. We're back and Todd's out of commission at the moment, so Zane Smith can take over the rest. Axel is sad, too. Irene was his school sweetheart. Damn, now there's only one thing that can take his mind off this. Splinters in the ass while banging in the cabin again. Tom is making his move by getting the where have you been all of these years? You just disappeared fight out of the way. Make him a hit, man, and this could be a gross point blank remake. While the video shows that Harry could be back from the dead, or some other madman is mailing people chocolates with Skittles inside of them, that doesn't mix. Just like these old bastards at alcohol. Harry! Hey! Get back up! Get the hell off! You know what they need? Another round of drinks! And yes, the drink can be in 3D. We'll all get drunk! They don't get too much entertainment around here, hence why he's watching Irene's evidence sex tape. Noah's fine, but it's two in the morning. 
What is that? He's watching one of my reviews on Pornhub. He's right to be angry. Finding a picture of Sarah and Tom on the dresser is really distracting him from picking out what to wear when he sees his mistress again. When people start suspecting Tom may be the killer, it doesn't help that he also brought with him an extra set of jump scares when he came back to town. It could be any one of them who's the killer. Best go right to the source. Match their beer breath with the empty cans found at the crime scene. Surely you'll catch your man. I knew it. It was old Schlitz Pete again. Hmm, now it's making me think he may be going crazy and seeing things. Though these mines are dangerous, it doesn't matter how long you fight with the killer, it will end with another pickaxe to the head. Also, he is going crazy and envisioning things. They still think Tom is the killer who killed this man, and then I guess jammed the lock shut with himself inside of the cage. <laughs> I'm gonna look like a fool if that is what happened. Anyway, he's taken immediately to the handsome department, where the small town drama continues, like Tom deciding not to sell the mine. What were you doing in the mine? I was gonna tell Ben that I'm not selling it. And why the hell not? The sheriff has a warrant to hang out behind the curtains and wait for anyone to bring up selling mines. It kind of goes into Elm Street territory, where years ago the townsfolk came together to do vigilante justice on Harry and then bury his remains, which are no longer there. Okay, boys, let's check the junkyard. They're probably in a trunk or something. Now back to the station. Can you tell me what my wife likes in bed? I haven't pleased her in a very long time. You know she settled for you, right? Ooh, 3D so good, I felt that burn. Unfortunately, we can't arrest him for pleasing your wife better than you, Sheriff. And he's been bailed out by Kevin, who shows up to somehow find a way to blame this on his son, John Locke. Another reason I'm sure they thought this was the right choice for a 3D remake is how the flashlights do look really cool with the effect. Don't let that distract you from the story. He arrives at the scene of the crime. Adultery and poor gift giving. Not to mention eating all of the good candy from the store so there's none left for a 50% off sale on the 15th. Whoop, hang on, I'm getting word that it's been minutes since a 3D effect. Oh, that smarts! Someone avenge me! Whew, thank you, I'm alive again. Whoever the killer is, they are definitely a fan of Lucio Fulci's zombie. Check the video store rentals immediately. Find out who rented all of the copies of that film. Uh, wait a minute, now let me add this and a little bit of this. I knew it! It is me! Kerr Smith is very frustrated. He's used to death just showing up unannounced. This time, they have to seek it out the hard way. Especially since Kevin Teig isn't the killer. There's no other evil character actors here. All we have is an asshole who goes to the store after hours, demanding more of those delicious Almond Joy Valentine's boxes. Those are his favorites. And a bag of Uts, too. The lights going out and his handy flashlight is a sign that Mountain Dew Pitch Black is back as well. Great marketing campaign. It's like some of these characters want to die. From earlier ones just running outside naked to here. Why, why, why would you put your head up to the door? And I don't know what the hell's going on now, so I'll assume she's unfortunately stuck with Mountain Dew Shark Bite. Sarah's got a plan, though. <laughs> Sounding the alarm. Probably should have done that earlier. My god, honey, are you okay? And most importantly, is my side piece Megan okay? She isn't, though. Now he'll have to find himself another bag lady. Why would he go after her? Everybody's connected to the mine. Ooh, I also feel this who's kidding who face without the 3D glasses. Even the headlines have him playing dumb. I am baffled by everything going on in this town. But anyway, in the house from Skinner Rink, but with the lights on, the good news is the kid is fine, I guess. The bad news, Tom Atkins gets it. Aw, oh, man, I'll take him over the kid. I don't know, something about that kid screams evil. He put the old woman in the machine for turning his cartoons off. This night is getting even worse. What can I find, Sarah? She left with that nice Tom Hanniger. 
Oh god, no. Does he also have his penis with him? Tom tries to convince her that Axel is the killer, because he's counting on it being so faithful to the original that they'll still have Axel turn out to be the killer again. But instead... Tom has been in a mental institute for the past seven years. He is not the guy you grew up with. Tom isn't Tom from My Bloody Valentine, he's Tommy from the Friday the 13th if they did make him the killer. Also, we had a sheriff as the killer last month in Bloody Murder 2. We can't do that again. Let's take another break so I can pop some more ibuprofen due to the glasses. Not that I'm wearing the 3D glasses, but just looking at them gives me a headache. Valentine's Day. Enough to send the very best. Now that we're back, she has to make a tough decision, picking one actor who appeared on Dawson's Creek between Jensen and Kerr. So she crashes the truck and goes off to find the nearest creek to pick that instead, but not before getting help from Axel, who sends her to his dad's old place. Eh, what, bro? You were using your dad's place for a hookup? Never mind that the Necronomicon might be in there. That's weird, dude. Also, honey, uh, don't mind the condom wrappers. The ghost of my dead dad uses them for hookups with other ghosts. Not to mention... Found the discount candy. It is a sign of a good remake that even though I saw the original, I still don't know who the killer is going to be here. Will it be Axel or Tom? We already know the washing machine came back to kill someone. This was certainly the era of horror remakes, and while they do have a reputation of being pretty bad, because more often than not they are... My Bloody Valentine 3D stands out as being one of the better ones, with Lussier and Farmer certainly being students of Friday the 13th 3D and knowing exactly what the audience is here for and how to give them a great time. Yes, they are masters of using the gimmicky throwing stuff at the camera 3D to an incredibly entertaining and inventive effect, which does make for a great theatrical experience, but even watching it at home in the 2D version, it still works with its mixture of sex and violence. And it's got all the love triangles you need in case you want some YA fare. What's gonna happen? Is she gonna say, I love you both, but I choose me, and then shoot herself? Fuck it. Just shoot us both. Or that. Also, she figures out Tom is the killer when he says Megan's dead when Sarah never told him that. See, honey, my cheating on you saved us both. You can thank me later. So yeah, Tom is insane and sees an imaginary Harry. Almost like it's also kind of a remake of High Tension. Good heavens, this is the Valentine's Day episode of Supernatural? I gotta start watching this show! This explains everything. He dug up Harry and grabbed the mask so he too can become one of the SWAT team members from the beginning of Dawn of the Dead. I mean, I guess we gotta fight him. I don't know, though. He'll still probably make a better husband than Axel. He just needs to find the right combination of meds. The killer doesn't go running off singing like at the end of the first one. Maybe they spent too much on the 3D and couldn't get the rights to Paul Zaza's The Ballad of Harry Warden. The cinematography and editing is pretty cool here. I like when he knocks out the lights where it briefly flashes him in Harry's minor gear. And then, of course, the gimmick. Sweet, it's a Bollywood remake of My Bloody Valentine now. While he may be a human slasher villain, don't worry, he's still a slasher villain, which means he survived that. Gotta leave it open for a sequel, even though there isn't a sequel to it. Just pretend these two live happily ever after, and Tom has the same ending as Dan Stevens at the end of The Guest. The movie, however, was very profitable, and Lussier and Farmer did want to do a sequel, but Lionsgate wasn't interested because of mixed reviews for this one. What? Since when have reviews mattered in making a slasher sequel? Especially one where the reviews weren't that bad! The first one may have been a bit moodier than this, and creepier at times. But this is a remake that does a good job of doing nods to the first, while still standing on its own. As for me, I got a hot romantic date night at the IHOP. As in me and the missus are gonna sit at home with a bowl of IHOP cereal and one spoon. When are you gonna dump this bum and run away with me? I got off work at eight.